Hello everybody, this is your boy Will, a.k.a. the greatest political mind the world will never know. Coming at you with the uh, fourth and final installment, the fourth and final night of my coverage and my commentary analysis on the Democratic National Convention. Tonight was the speech of all speeches for the black African American candidate for president. He accepted the nomination tonight, which is a milestone and probably of kind of appropriate because this is the 45th anniversary of the I Have a Dream speech given by the great late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, honestly, as you, if you watch my videos before, you know I am no Barack Obama supporter by any stretch of the imagination, but I am happy to see that we have come to a point in our country's history where a black person, regardless if he is unqualified, was able to achieve this status and make history by becoming the Democratic presidential candidate. Does he deserve it? No. Um, is he qualified to be president? No. But you Obama Kool-Aid drinkers out there, regardless of what I think, you guys are going to do whatever you want to do, and you voted for him. You got him in there. He's there. It's done. Now, the, the real test begins. But before I get into what he needs to do after this, let's talk about the speech. The speech was a good speech. It was a really well-done speech. The speechwriter who wrote this speech deserves a raise. Um, Obama did a lot of what he needed to do. He was able to uh, inoculate himself from past McCain attacks. He was able to uh, give a little meat to the people. Maybe not been red meat, you know, the beef, but he was able to give a little turkey, a little chicken to the people um, who might have been on the fence, those independents, those Reagan Democrats. He was able to give something he's never done before, and that is give substance to his rhetoric. I mean, I don't know how he's going to pay for most of it. He's going to have to raise taxes, people. I mean, you're talking about a trillion dollars probably at the least of programs that he's trying to accomplish. And cutting out spending and, and shoring up loopholes is not going to cut it. He's going to have to raise somebody's taxes. And even if it's on the rich, I guarantee you the definition of rich will change. But the speech was effective, very effective, very well written. Um, he stumbled in the beginning of the speech. I thought, you know, he was, he was nervous. You can tell, but who wouldn't be nervous when you're making history and you got the eyes of maybe 10 to 15 million people who are watching you know who probably were not watching the US Open watching you and the night was not wasted on him at all I mean the guy had the right to be nervous I gotta give it to him so that's not really a criticism just an observation uh, then towards the middle of the speech when he started to give the red meat um, more criticism of McCain and talking about how McCain was Bush and then towards the end, he did kind of mess it up with a little more soaring rhetoric, platitudes, and slogans, but I'll forgive him for that. So I give the speech a good B minus. He, he, he did very well. He did what he needed to do. He accomplished what his, um, his marketing team needed him to accomplish. Um, John McCain uh, needs to be a little worried about tonight because I guarantee you what this speech probably did most of all was those Hillary supporters who may not want to vote for McCain, who are on the fence, they just might come over to Obama because of the abortion issue that he covered and those independents might be a little more comfortable with him because he was able to straddle the fence very skillfully about gun control, abortion, and gay rights. So I gotta give him that one. You gotta give him that one. Sorry everybody, but oh my back is hurting a little bit. Um, so therefore I gotta give him credit on that. Also, uh, He's going to maybe get about a 10-point bump, maybe 12 points. Um, I doubt it. I mean, because honestly, just about two days ago, which is something historical in itself for any convention, Republican or Democrat, he actually went down in the polls. So after this speech, getting the Hillary supporters, I would say not maybe not the Puma people or the No Deal people or the Obama people, but those people who may have been on the fence to coming over to him, he might get a 10-point bounce. But that's still kind of low considering that Bill Clinton got between 12 and 15 points, the caucus got 18 points, and I also believe John Kerry got between 12 and 15 point bump as well. So um, Obama has a lot of work cut out for him. 
Because words are words and promises are promises, but how are you going to pay for it, buddy? That's what most people are going to want to know now. I mean, because you promised a lot. And we've heard it before in 1992 and 1996 with Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton also talked about responsibility, parents turning off the TV. It's almost that he took, whoever wrote that speech took the 1992 speech and just made it more um, applicable to today. That's all. That's what it sounded like to me. But all you Obama Kool-Aid drinkers, I'm pretty sure you probably think it's the greatest speech since I have a dream speech. Shoot, you probably think it's better than I have a dream speech. But that's your prerogative to think so. So that's my analysis of the speech pretty much. Um, I think it was a very well done speech. It did what it needed to do. Um, McCain is going to step on the speech a little bit tomorrow because you know McCain is going to actually announce his VP pick. And if it's something um, non-traditional for a Republican to do, like a woman or maybe Joe Lieberman who is an independent Democrat, that is going to shake the foundation of the political world and Obama's speech coverage is going to be non-existent because everybody's going to be talking about John McCain, the Maverick, the Straight Talk Express, and it's going to be on and popping. So anyway, I just want to give another shout out to all you people who have been watching my videos, whether you agree with me or not. I appreciate the time and effort that you have put into um, giving me comments. You know, that's what makes America great. You make America great. Even the Obama Kool-Aid drinkers, the McCain people, you independents, Reagan Democrats, I appreciate you all because we're all here together. We're all Americans. And we're all proud of our country. We just have different ways of trying to make it better. But together, I'm pretty sure that we can do whatever we need to do as a people, whether we're white, black, Jewish, or Catholic, whatever it takes, we're going to get it done because the greatness of America is not our politicians, it's not about Obama, it's not about McCain, it's about us, the American people. And they can't do nothing without us. So until next time, may God bless you all, may God bless this country, and I'm out. This is your boy Will, a.k.a. the greatest political mind the world will never know. Mm.